Okay guys, so on today's video we are going to be doing bell work and then we will also talk through the graph of the week. So here's your bell work question. Um, pause the video, try to figure out how much money this is and then play it and I will talk you through my thought process. But you have nine $20 bills, seven $10 bills, three $5 bills, four $1 bills, eight quarters, seven dimes, four nickels, and 42 pennies. So that is the scenario. How much money would this be? Um, you can use a calculator if you want to find it. But again, pause the video, try to work it out, and then check your answer. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, let's go ahead and talk through how I would do this. Um, this is actually a question brought to you by Kayla. So she made this a little challenging. It is actually a lot more money than the other ones we have done, but this is a good challenge. So first I would go through and I'd figure out how much um, each of the different types of bills totals. So if I have nine $20 bills, okay, five $20 bills gives me 100. So nine $20 bills is going to give me $180. Again, you can count by 20, so 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180. Sorry, my dog's wandering around, so if you hear that, it's my dog. <laughs> um, seven $10 bills is going to be $70. Three $5 bills is going to be $15. And four $1 bills is going to be $4. Okay, so I'm doing that first, then I'm gonna go through and look at the coins. So eight quarters is gonna give me $2. Seven dimes is gonna give me 70 cents. Four nickels is gonna give me 20 cents. And 42 pennies is gonna give me 42 cents. All right, then I would go through and I would total how much money I have in bills. So, um, <clears throat> I have 180 plus 70, which would be 250. And then I have 250 plus 15, which is 265, plus four is 269. So I have that much money plus all of this change. I would then probably go through and say, let's see how I would do this. I would probably say, okay, $2 plus 70 cents is $2.70. 20 cents plus 42 cents is 62 cents. And then I would add this up. So I would probably add 270 and 62. 270 plus 62 gives me what, 332? And then I would add that to 269. I would get 272.32. So there you go. Long question by Kayla um, on how many cents. I had to do that pretty slowly. Uh, but a lot of you, I imagine, would stop at this point at least and put it in the calculator um, to get all that money. So, man, 270 two dollars and 32 cents two seventy two thirty two all right so there's your bell work all right um you are not turning in bell work this week so go ahead put it in a safe spot we will continue that next week you'll turn it in next friday um and then you do need to get the graph of the week from the substitute so if you don't have that make sure you've got it you can pause the video get it out um you are gonna have to make i think 11 observations um so we can go ahead and start working on that. Okay, so here is the graph of the week. <clears throat> this graph of the week is actually a little bit different than ones we've done in the past. Um, just it's a different topic. So this week is actually about concussions. Concussions are a type of head injury. Um, I think what happens when you get a concussion is your brain kind of like bounces around in your skull. I know that sounds kind of gross, but what happens and the reason why concussions have been such a major um, conversation recently is with sports and with medicine. So a lot of different sports um, used to be a lot more dangerous in the past and different safety regulations like equipment and stuff has um, changed over the years so that 
the sports can be safer and safer and safer because people are getting concussions over and over and then they're having memory problems or they're having more significant brain problems down the line. So um, this is actually something, you know, it's on the news quite a bit, talking about head injuries and the safety of different sports. Um, So I was thinking this might be a good one just because you would actually see data about this um, just anywhere. You can see it online, you can see it on social media, you can see it on the news. Um, This has been kind of a common um, discussion that has been had on the news in the last five, ten years. So you need to do, let's see, how many lines are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So try to do, try to do twelve observations. You can do it. I believe in you guys. That's one for every line. Um, also keep in mind that the subgrade is going to be going on here. So if you are goofing off or whatever, then that is going to affect your grade. All you gotta do is watch this video, do your observations, and then work on Moby Max. <clears throat> so, um, Let's start out with the graph on the left. The title of the graph on the left is Head Injuries in Sports, okay? And we do get a little bit of insight on the data being read. So it says rates per 10,000 games and practices. Again, it's a little blurry, but um, rates per 10,000 games and practices. So really, okay, we know that these kind of injuries happen a lot. But we're talking about how many injuries per 10,000 games and practices. So you think maybe um, back to different sports you've done, if you are practicing four days a week and you have a game once a week, that would be five. So these um, injuries, while they are bad when they happen, you know, it's only a handful every 10,000 games and practices. So that does kind of put it into perspective. Okay, we also have two uh, pieces of data. We have high school numbers and we have college numbers. So high school is gonna be the lighter color. Um, on this one, it's kind of an, a yellow color and then college is going to be blue. And we also want to know the source. It is the Institute of Medicine. So I don't actually know anything about um, that company. Okay, it's not as famous as other companies, but um, obviously it sounds legitimate. So if we look through along the left side, um, it's it's not really a y-axis, but it's kind of like a y-axis. Uh, the categories along the left side are football, ice hockey, women's and men's, lacrosse, women's and men's, soccer, women's and men's, wrestling, basketball, women's and men's, softball, baseball, and volleyball. So these are um, all contact team sports, um, except for wrestling. Wrestling's individual. But the rest of them are contact sports. Wrestling, obviously, there is a lot of contact, um, even though it's individual. And then along the bottom, so effectively the x-axis on this graph is 0, 3, 6, 9, and 12. So it is um, <clears throat> number of head injuries. So if we look sort of through the different sports, um, it looks to me like football at the high school level is going to be the most dangerous sport or the the sport with the most head injuries, um, which makes sense, right? At the high school level, um, you know, high school football is a really popular thing. Um, It is definitely a lot of contact. Um, especially people who are trying to play in college, you know, are dedicating a lot of time and energy to playing football at the high school level. But then we notice that at the college level, head injuries are happening a lot less. So, I mean, you could even have an interesting conversation on that. Like, why does it get so much safer um, when you go to college? Why does it go from 12 injuries at per 10,000 games down to six or seven? It looks like it's almost cut in half, you know? Um, but you also can think about the fact that there are different rules, there are different regulations when it comes to high school and college sports. Um, and college football is one of those areas in, is, um, in addition to the National Football League, so professional football, that have really had to crack down because head injuries were so common. So then you can look through and you could compare. You could say, well, women's ice hockey has less head injuries than men's ice hockey. 
Um, women's lacrosse at the high school level has less head injuries than men's lacrosse, but then at the college level, it flips around. Um, the worst sport for head injuries appears to be college wrestling. Um, and baseball seems to be the safest sport, you know, so you can make all kinds of observations about that. You could also say specific numbers. Um, so you could say something like, in college volleyball, there are an average of three head injuries per 10,000 games. That would be an observation. Um, so I would encourage you to maybe make one observation on your own, not just copy down what I'm saying, but make an observation on your own and, and sort of look at this data. Do you play any of these sports? Um, have you ever had a concussion? Concussions happen. You know, what, what was your experience like with that? Do you see a correlation between your concussion, however you got it, and the data we're talking about? So um, I personally played lacrosse in high school. I know I don't appear very sporty, um, but I can see in lacrosse why you would get a head injury. You're literally hitting uh, people with metal sticks, <laughs> so that happens. Um, you're also... Uh, there's a ball being thrown around. There's a lot of running. So it's a very physical sport. Men's lacrosse, I think, is even more dangerous. Um, women's lacrosse, you only wear an eye protector. And men's lacrosse, you wear a helmet. So, you know, think, think about things like that from personal experience. The second graph <clears throat> is entitled Concussion as a Percent of Total Injury. Okay, so kind of a weird title. We're not exactly sure what that means, but then there's a bit of a description underneath. So concussion has steadily risen over the past decades as an increasingly prevalent injury in high school sports. Prevalent means it's showing up a lot and it's like serious or important. The American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, so those are going to be bone doctors, found girls soccer players suffered concussions at a significantly higher rate than football players and boys in matched sports. So if we look through, um, we have two different sports. So we have football between 2005 and 2006, and then almost a decade later we have football again. And then we have girls' soccer between 2005 and 2006, and then we have girls' soccer again uh, nine years later. The source of this is the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, um, and it looks like it was originally from the Washington Post. So that is something you guys have heard of, the Washington Post. Um, <clears throat> and it looks like along the, what would be the x-axis kind of, would be percentages, okay? Concussion as a percent of total injury. So my guess is saying of all the injuries total, so like of all the injuries total in football, so if we had all the injuries in football, 10.5% of the injuries were concussions. So that means there's about 90 other, 90% 90 um, other kinds of injuries. So that might be broken bones, that might be sprained ankles, things like that that are not involving the brain. In girls' soccer... Okay, at the same time, 15% of all total injuries were concussions. So again, 85% of injuries were other things, but 15% um, were concussions. And then we look what happened. So over nine years, the percents um, that were concussions almost doubles for football. It's up to 24%. So one in four injuries were head injuries of all of the injuries that happened. And in girls' soccer, 34%, almost 35% of all injuries um, were head injuries. So over a third of the data, one of every three injuries in girls' soccer were head injuries. So my natural question next would be, okay, well, what's the total number of injuries? Were those injuries going down or were there more injuries over time? But yes, it does appear that uh, women's soccer has more concussions overall, um, and that's an interesting fact, okay? I would say why is that happening? Why are concussions more prevalent in women's soccer? 
Um, you can think of your own reasons. I would say women's soccer does not wear full body pads. Football, you do. You have a helmet. You have shoulder pads. You have pads on your legs. Um, women's soccer, you are protecting your shins. You have shin guards. Um, so I would also maybe say, well, how could we compare this to men's soccer? Okay, is this just a soccer thing? Is this a gender thing? There is a lot going on there. Um, I also think there's this perception in sports that men um, tackle harder. Men play a more physical game. This could be something that contradicts that, right? Uh, in football, a game where you're actively hitting people and tackling people, um, there are less head injuries than in a sport like soccer where you might be doing slide tackles. You might be... Uh, using your head to hit the ball. You might be tripping over people and stumbling over people. So there's a lot going on with this data. Um, but again, I did this concussion one because one, it's something you guys might be dealing with. I know a lot of you guys play sports, do organized um, activities through school or through um, different leagues. But I just think that this is a good discussion and I need you to do again 11 what did I say no 12 observations so it's one per line make sure you have the sub initial at the end and if you are done with this go ahead log into Moby Max do a lesson or two on Moby Max we're going to talk more about Moby Max next week um, but that is your option for the rest of the hour please be good for the sub and turn in this worksheet and make sure you get it initialed also put your name on it always helps to have your name on it for when you want to get a grade. All right, I will see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend.